Hey guys, James with Torches and Tactical, and today we're looking at an ultra long thrower from our friends over at Workhouse. They sent me the TDO1, and this is a 2200 lumen, 1039 meters of throw, long range TIR thrower, and this has eight, wait, hold on. This has eight output modes in addition to two groups, so you can change between a normal step setting and a tactical mode. In addition to that, you get up to 270,000 candela of reach with this single TIR optic. If you're curious, this is also IPX8 and impact resistance to one meter. So this TIR optic does have four degrees for the throw mode and 53 degrees for flood. So that means it's not gonna be like an LEP or a laser, uh, anything like that, but you are gonna get a little bit of that flood while this center section here does throw out at four degrees. So it will expand with distance, but not like you might think. In addition to that, it's not that heavy uh, for its size, which is 157 millimeters by 59 millimeters. Uh, but for its size, it does come in at 200 grams without the battery installed. So, I mean, while it is a little bit larger than, uh, I don't know, say their TS-10, uh, it's still very, very pocketable. The shoulders fit here easily in the hand, so it's you're able to give it a nice grip, even though it is uh, larger than some of their other offerings. And if we move this aside, I do want to focus on the packaging here just for a second. Now you do see the Workos TD-01, and this, like it says on the front here, 2200 lumens, 1039 meters of throw. We'll flip it over here. Oh, that is bright. But we'll flip it over here. The TD-01, it is black. And as far as I know, this is the only color available. I haven't heard anything else about that. But it has the SFT-40 LED that, depending on the mode, depending on the output, comes in between 6,000 and 6,500. And it is the set. So it does come with that 21700 cell battery. If we flip over, you can see that it has an eco mode. That is 30 lumens with a runtime of 70 hours. Low has 150 lumens for 15 hours. Medium is 350 lumens for nine hours. High is 900 lumens for four hours. And in turbo, you do get all 2200 lumens for a total of two and a half hours of runtime. And yes, I am noticing this right now. It does come in at 270,000 candelas, not the 27,000 that is listed here. But if you wanna go ahead and pause, you can take a look at all of these. And now inside the package, we do have a USB-C cable and Workhouse is very known. Uh, with their set, they do include a USB-A to USB-C. So no fancy coloring, anything like that. It is a pretty generic package um, and it doesn't even have the elastic around it. This is like a, like a small wire twist tie. Also, you do get a little card that's gonna let you know that you do have to remove a little isolator um, that just stops the battery from making contact during shipment which is here. Now, Workhouse has been putting these in here ever since I've been dealing with Workhouse. You also do have a little plastic bag that is going to give you a generic lanyard as well as a couple replacement O-rings if you ever have to service your light. And finally, you do also have a user manual. Now, this is going to give you all those same specs that I was talking about earlier, as well as how to get the most out of your light, how to access each of the modes, but we will go through that in the user interface and all those instructions and everything come through in a multitude of different languages. So with all that out of the way, let's focus on the star of the show. Now guys, this is the td one and if you've seen my recent reviews on the td 2 uh, the Sofer and SC33, I mean, there's quite a few of them, but if you've seen any of my recent reviews, now this battery tube is gonna look pretty familiar. Um, this it seems kind of like a mix of a lot of the older Soferns and um, kind of their TS-22. It is a much larger scallop, um, but it goes all the way around. And frankly, I think this, this provides a lot of amazing, amazing grip. And in addition to that, it really looks awesome. So if we move up a little bit from there, you will see these pretty deep cooling fins here that surround this E-switch. Now this E-switch doesn't do anything with that out that tail cap pressed in. But again, we're going to go over the user interface and we will get through all that here in just a second. But you have the E-switch and then opposite the E-switch, you do have USB-C charging. And again, it's that really nice, uh, more rectangular style. And I really like how these fit, but it does have USB-C charging. And then you'll notice these little machines or these cutouts that sit kind of, uh, I, I guess you'd call it the shoulder. And that comes up right before these 
really drastic size increases from this TIR optic. So you come up onto the bezel, you will see some more machining. And I mean, it seems like they threw a lot of different design elements into this and it, it it's, it's a little much, but I think they pulled it off if I'm being frank. But you also see some crenulations in this more uh, generic style bezel, but you see the crenulations up here and that crenulation helps it sit up top from this really, it's, it's the largest TIR optic I've ever seen. But this huge TIR optic, I mean, you know that these are specifically designed to throw out light. And I mean, reaching over 1000 meters, you know that this one's gonna be doing its job very well. And what's interesting to note is the bezel, this entire crenulation and everything sits all the way up. So if you do need to replace anything up here, um, I, I haven't tried to do this, but uh, here, actually here, let me let me take a gander and see if it does. Okay, it actually does unscrew, but the bezel is part of this, uh, the, the side piece here. So if you ever do need to uh, do any changes or anything like that, uh, I'm actually surprised it was not glued, but let me do this very carefully. I don't want to mess anything up. You can see that huge TIR optic right there with the SFT40, pretty large MCPCB in there. And actually, let me take a look at this here. You can see the machining marks here. It is O-ring sealed and there is a glass lens on there as well. So they definitely took their time and made sure that this was all very well done. So let's go ahead and put this back in now because I don't want to mess up anything, especially before you guys see exactly how this operates. All right, with that lens back in place, we'll go ahead and you will see another O-ring up here and that's gonna seal the outside elements from that corner where the glass meets. So we'll go ahead and put this back on. But I think it looks really, really nice um, again. And we'll get this tight. There we go. Okay, everything's back together. But while we're undoing everything, let's just go ahead and undo the battery tube also so you can see the back side of that MCPCB. So this is actually where the driver is going to make contact. And this does have, um, it's actually kind of a soft spring. I would have guessed that uh, for the kind of power it's trying to pull out of an SFT40, because usually about 2000 lumens is the limit, but being able to pull 2200 lumens, you know that they're going to want to try to mitigate as much uh, potential for failure as possible. You see the large ring on the outside, and that's going to make contact with the side of your battery tube. So we'll get this back on. Nice anodized thread so everything slides together really, really easily. Then we'll go ahead and take off this tail cap. And don't worry, we will talk about the tail cap here in just a second. But that continuity is continued with the bare end on the back side of the battery tube as well. And as far as batteries go, now this is the Workos 21700 is rated at 5,000 milliamp hours, and it is a flat top. So there is a flat top in here, but there's quite a bit of, of space or uh, I guess spring tension, if you will, because it does have the springs on both ends. Now, as far as this, this tail cap, while the front side did have one single spring, the back side does have two. So you get quite a bit more resistance on this back side here. And again, that, uh, that bare aluminum here is gonna make contact inside with that tail switch. So we'll get this back on, slides on nicely with those very nicely lubricated anodized threads. And the final design element I wanna take a look at with you guys is this rear tail cap. So the tail cap does have a switch. It is a pretty long travel switch. Um, it's not any sort of e-switch or anything like that. Um, it's kind of, uh, I mean, I don't know a nice way to say this. It feels kind of generic. Um, it has, there's a little bit of travel before it hits the actual switch inside of it. And once you're doing that, there's still quite a bit of travel. I'd say maybe, here, let's go ahead and take a look together. So, okay, I'm on the switch, but I'm not pushing. Now I'm pushing down the tail cap and I'm, I'm going about one, one and a half millimeters before I actually get 
into contact with the plunger on that switch. So then if I keep pushing, we're gonna go one, two, three. I'd say there's just under maybe uh, two and a, right, just a hair over two millimeters uh, of travel before the actual light engages. So, um, but aside from the actual tail switch, the rest of the cap has this nice knurling, which seems kind of out of place. Um, it's the only place on here that does have it. I would have kind of preferred to see some sort of design element carry over from either the cooling fins, the machining up here near the head, uh, something like that. I want to see that carry over to this tail cap. And finally, you do have two saddles, one on each side, so you can identify the location of that switch very easily. Now, I don't want anything to, uh, that I said earlier to sway you guys away from this. It it works great. Um, it's just, it seems like a, definitely a parts bin pull, and uh, I, I feel like it could have been better. On the tail cap, you do have, it is a nice molded rubber, but you do have some uh, marks here that help give you grip. And if you need to attach that lanyard, you can attach it to either side. Uh, if you attach it to this side, you will have to go over. But if you go on this side of the saddle, you can attach it through so it won't interfere if you ever have to uh, set it down. But this doesn't tail stand because the switch does protrude further out than the saddles. So, all right. And now that we have focused on the aesthetics for probably longer than we need to, uh, let's go ahead and focus on how the user interface works so you can get the most of your T01 and you know how to switch in between everything. So what you can do is activate your TD01 by hitting this rear tail switch. So there we go, the light is on. And what you can do from here is when you're in stepped mode, you simply press this button here. And so right now we're in eco mode, this is 30 lumens. Then you have low, 150. Then you have 350 in medium, 900 in high. But if you press it again, it's gonna go back down to eco. So from any of these modes, as long as your battery voltage supports it, what you can do to access that 2200 lumens in turbo is do a quick double press. And that is, there we go. That is 2200 lumens from the TD-01. And if you need to, while you're in stepped mode, you can also go ahead and do a triple press. Now, get, fair warning, this is going to be a, uh, a strobe. There you go. Now it's a three, or a triple press will give you your tactical strobe. So in addition to that, what you can do is you can press and hold this button down while the light is on. So one, two, three, four, there we go, about four seconds. Now you are in tactical mode. So here you simply have a high and a low, but it's not designed for use on the side switch. It's designed for tactical use. So you're gonna use that rear tactical switch. And from here, it automatically starts in high every single time. So even if you switch this to low, we'll go ahead and shut that off and boom, look at that, you're in high again. So from here, what you can do is a quick double press or double momentary press of the rear tactical switch sends you instantly to that tactical strobe. And while you are in that tactical strobe, you can do a double press on the E-switch and that will go in between a strobe an SOS, and one more time, this is going to serve as just a regular beacon. So guys, that is how to get the most of your TD-01. Uh, that's everything that they show me in the user manual and uh, everything I've been, everything I've had the chance to play with for the past few days. So, I mean, ultimately this is really, really nice. Um, additionally, when this is on, you will see a battery indicator here. So when you are charging this, uh, it will indicate when it's full. It will go from red to green. And that battery indicator will also let you know when you first start up for a couple seconds exactly what that battery capacity is at. So we've talked about the aesthetics of the TD-01 for, I mean, honestly, probably way too long. Um, then we went over exactly how it works. So now I want to compare the Workhouse TD-01 to another offering in the long range thrower category. So for that, we have the Olight Warrior X Turbo. Now the Warrior X Turbo has half as many lumens. It has 1100 lumens, but it throws out about as far. This does. This is a one kilometer plus light and it has half as many lumens. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna see how that TIR optic compares to a long deep reflector. So in addition to that, let's take a look at the beam patterns 
and you guys can tell me which one you guys like better. So let's get outside. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we have the Workos TD-01 compared to the Olight Warrior X Turbo. So let's just get straight into it. Now, if I hit that rear tactical tail switch on the Workos TD-01, it will go to high mode because currently we are set in the tactical group. And if I hit that side switch, it'll drop down to low. So high is 2200 lumens. This is all 2200 lumens in the high mode right now. And if we press and hold that switch, there we go. Now it dropped way, way, way down. So this is low and we'll go ahead and ramp up these modes for a more uh, normal flashlight carry. So press and so press and it will come up. Here we go. And if you do a double press, it will go to all 2200 lumens and 1039 meters of throw. From here, you can do a triple press and it will activate that tactical strobe. And to compare, we have the Olight Warrior X Turbo. Let's go ahead and hit that rear tactical tail switch. So if we do a half press, it will drop into low mode. And if we do a full press, it will drop into high mode. Now this is only 1100 lumens, half as many as the Workos TD-01, but also quite a bit more expensive. So again, one more time, we have the Workos TD-01. This is tactical mode. So we are at all 2200 lumens and we can drop down or we can cycle through more of those modes with the alternate group that it has. All right, now that we saw the TD-01 and the Warrior X Turbo in action, let's go ahead and get back inside. All right, guys, we're back, and we saw the Workos TD-01 and compared it to the Olight Warrior X Turbo. Now, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, if you want a really, really, really tight hotspot, Warrior X Turbo might be a little more suited for you, um, but if you want a still a really long throw, and if you want a little bit softer on the spill, I think the Workos TD-01 has you covered there. Now, the the uh, I'm, I'm just going to say the color temps weren't that far off as far as all is considered. So here, let's look at them right now. I mean, the clarity of the hotspot on the Warrior X Turbo makes it look a little brighter and how focused it is. But um, honestly, I don't think... I, th I think the difference is negligible. So a lot of it's going to come down to Warrior X Turbo comes in at $139.99, and that's on the Olight Store website. However, Workos TD-01, it retails for $58.55, but it's on sale right now um, and on sale all the time. I mean, Workos is always on sale, guys. Um, so if you want to pick up the TD-01, at least right now at the time of recording, it comes in at $40.99. So there's about a hundred dollar difference in between these two. I'm, I'm not saying the Olight's bad. I'm not saying it's not worth the money, but it is quite a bit more expensive than the Workos TD-01. And don't worry, we will have a full review coming on that, that Olight here soon. So the TD-01 is a fantastic in the hand light. Uh, I'm going to say that first and foremost. It is super fantastic. It's nice to see a TIR optic that is as large as this is. And the fact that they kept it protected with such a large glass lens is also really, really nice. Uh, I will tell you that the design aesthetic is spot on. I, I wish they did something about this tail cap, but other than that, uh, the design aesthetic is, is fantastic. I think the rear tail switch is a little bit on the vague side, if I'm being honest. Um, and I mean, there's not a lot of other bad I can really say about it. I, I really do like the light. And that's coming from someone who isn't keen on throwers. Uh, I prefer typically a huge wall of light. So um, the TS-11 that I recorded, the Loop LEP that I recorded, and now this, I'm trying to expand my horizons to give you guys the best of all categories, not just what suits me best. So the TD-01 coming in at $49.99 is a fantastic, fantastic, 
fantastic option. And I think you would be amiss if you didn't try to pick up one of these while you had the opportunity. It's a fantastic thrower, feels great in the hands. Uh, and I mean, since all of their parts Lego, you could probably switch this with another light if I'm being frank. So guys, uh, this is my review of the Workhouse td one And I would love it if you guys could like the video, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. And if you do, click that bit. Wait, hold on. Where's the bell? Okay, there it is. Click that bell right there. That'll let us tell you guys when we put a new video out so you can be one of the first to watch it. And if there's a giveaway, get as many entries as possible so you can win yourself a new light. Thank you guys so much for being here with me today. And we'll see you in the next one.